Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykantz, Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are four members of the school staff and community who have been hard at work thinking about and planning for full day kindergarten in Needham. Conversation actually that's been going on for many, many years. I want to welcome uh, this morning a few folks. Jessica Peterson, Principal at Newman Elementary School. Thanks for being here, Thank Jessica. You. Diane Simmons, our Director of Planning, Communications, and Community Education. Connie Barr, Chair of the School Committee. And Mary Lammy, our Director of Student Support Services. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Full day kindergarten seems to be this long saga and story that Needham, this elusive, uh, this elusive goal for, for Needham for many, many years. Connie, uh, why, why not? Why, why is full day kindergarten, why is it a priority for the school committee right now? I think the main reason it is just clear that it's important to our youngest learners to um, have a full day experience in kindergarten and it has been something that the school committee and the school department have been working on for a number of years. There was a feasibility study now 14 years ago in 2002 when the importance of full day kindergarten was identified and I think it just came to the time when we really needed to bite the bullet and make some changes so that we can provide the benefits of full day kindergarten to our five-year-old students in the school system. There are social benefits, educational benefits, intellectual benefits. Um, there are many benefits to our students who are somewhat at-risk learners who need more time on learning. Um, it's increasingly difficult to provide the curriculum that we'd like to have and that we are told we need to provide for our kindergarten students in the time they have in a two and a half an hour, two and a half hour day. Many of our parents already enroll their children in CASE, which provides somewhat of a full day experience. And CASE does a wonderful job providing additional curriculum. But we need to offer that to all of our students. At least that's how we've come to think. We want to be able to offer a full day experience to all of our students for all of the benefits. Parents are looking for it. Teachers are looking for it. Our students will benefit. Well, I, I, I echo that, that parents are looking for it. I know that uh, every year we, we do a Know Your Schools program, Diane and, mm -hmm. and Mary and, and Jessica and I have been involved in that. And I think, uh, Connie, you have been too. And parents come in, typically preschool parents, and uh, they're asking, where is full day kindergarten? I, I moved into this town because of its educational reputation. And uh, so we have, to, we have to have that conversation now for many years, saying, well, it's coming, it's coming, it's, it, it has been elusive. And, and Connie, I think Needham is also one of the things I've learned, uh, one of really only a handful of communities that doesn't have full day K. Given our school system that we're proud of and that does an excellent job with our students, it's hard to believe that we're one just of a handful of communities that don't provide a full day kindergarten experience. In many of those it's compulsory, all students participate on a tuition free basis. In some it is still available on a lottery basis, but almost every community, more than 300 in the Commonwealth, provide a full day kindergarten experience. We do not want to be behind the eight ball on that. Right. <clears throat> well, Diane, maybe, maybe you can um, help uh, help me out a little bit and explain what was the process that, that led to uh, this report actually that is available on uh, the school department's website under news, um, this really comprehensive report of the full day kindergarten study and planning committee. What was the process? Who was involved? What, what did that look like? We had a very dedicated committee. It was a combination of school committee members, Connie included, key staff like the folks that are here, um, additional support from the CASE program, the director of the CASE program and the director of the preschool program. And our job was really to look at a pathway to full day kindergarten. The um, district has gotten stuck over the years as to what are the steps that are necessary to, to make us uh, get to the place where we can offer full day kindergarten. And so this committee did a job that was both broad and deep. We looked at all of the issues that have gotten in the, in the way in the past and we generated potential solutions to those issues. And so the things that we covered beyond the value, which we, we took as a sort of given, but yet we um, did our due diligence and did significant research to clarify the value. We looked at um, the current status of our kindergarten program, what's working well, what are the issues with the current kindergarten program, as well as the case program. And we looked to the community. We did surveys of community members. We did focus groups with the community members to get a better understanding from them directly. And we solved those, or tried to solve the problems that have gotten in our way uh, regarding space, regarding budget, just so we begin to have that pathway in front of us. More work to do, but a lot of progress has been made as reflected in the report. 
Well, it, it really is a comprehensive report. It lays out a uh, possible pathway to, to, making, to making this happen. Uh, Jessica, one of, the, one of the things that folks who are listening to this conversation or who have read the report will, will ask us about is, and kind of you mentioned it, is CASE. So, so Needham has a half-day program available for all kindergarten age students, a uh, very successful program. Uh, and then we have CASE, the Kindergarten After School Enrichment uh, program that seems to serve a, um, uh, a need for 60 or 70 percent of our families. Why not just continue with CASE? I mean, why can't we move, ahead, move forward with that in, in your view? Yeah, CASE is a wonderful program um, and definitely adds to and enriches a kindergarten experience. Um, but really, when we take a look at our Massachusetts curriculum standards and the frameworks there, uh, looking at first grade upward, they're really based on a full day kindergarten experience. And so for some of our learners, having time in a full day kindergarten program, being able to develop those skills, meet those state frameworks is crucial for their success. Um, CASE does a wonderful job of enriching and offering interdisciplinary projects, but full day kindergarten would actually allow for teachers to immerse children in the content areas throughout the day so they'd be able to apply what they learned earlier in the day and get some feedback right in the moment. So it's, it's just a little bit of a different structure. It also allows for an equitable experience for all kids. Um, you know, if we're looking at providing this as a foundation for all students, full day kindergarten would offer that, whereas CASE right now is an optional piece. And thinking about full day kindergarten and, and perhaps some of your colleagues in other communities and some of the research out there, uh, you mentioned about the, the frameworks really uh, requiring that we, we provide more for our students. Is there, is there any other compelling information or, or things that, that you've learned and experienced that would suggest full day kindergarten is important? Sure. Um, you know, when we look at the developmental ranges of students that are ages four to six, there's, there's a wide range there developmentally. Um, and so for some students, the opportunity to be able to practice skills and to really reinforce what they're hearing over a period of time is essential for them to master that. Um, you know, and so allowing for students to have a full day experience allows for the, the multiple, uh, the range of learning that can happen at kindergarten level. As students get older, that range tends to diminish a bit, but particularly at kindergarten and at preschool, um, there's a wide range, and so we need to allow opportunity for all students to be successful um, in those early stages. Um, I also think that that success uh, begets success, so this is the first opportunity for kids to be in a school setting, and we need to make sure that our students are feeling successful and understand who they are as learners so that they can carry that positive attitude going through forward uh, into the, the upper grades. I'm not an educator, but I'm deeply interested in education, and it seems to me that more students would come more ready for first grade if they had the same experience, a, a congruous experience in their kindergarten year, as opposed to some who have case and some who don't. Uh, absolutely, and, and again, you know, that first grade year is there's still a wide range. Um, I think you know a slight difference to that, but an important difference is that um, you know students who start to receive a lot of support per, let's say. Um, in that beginning first grade year because they didn't have a full day experience, you know, it does change the way that a student feels about themselves as a learner. And when we're saying that this is developmentally appropriate, it, it it's a little bit hard for students to see that at that young age that, um, you know, really that they're just on this this spectrum of, of development um, and that actually that's it's typical for some kids to need a little bit of extra time or support. So this would allow them, um, you know, a more level playing field for some of those students. Mary, talk a little bit about uh, some of those students who might even need some additional support in, in kindergarten. And of course, it reminds me that we have for some of our students, uh, because of their, their needs, they're in, a, in a essentially a full day preschool program, and then we have this right. half day kindergarten program. Yeah, we kind of right. go backwards and then, so what? how will this help uh, another group of our students? Um, yeah, absolutely, I mean, uh, uh, we all feel, you know, uh, um, certainly through the work that we've done over the last couple of years, minimally as um, the study committee that there's value for all students when it comes to full day kindergarten and um, being better able to meet students needs but certainly there's a smaller population of what we would refer to as at-risk learners um, students that are um, uh, 
potentially already receiving special education services, but certainly others who simply just need more support that we would provide typically through um, our general ed programming as well. And these are students that just, you know, their pace needs to be modified. Um, and, it, and there's and there's certainly should be lots of opportunity to be able to do that at the kindergarten level. Um, students that um, can really get challenged by having a lot of transitions in their day or changes in their routine or even changes in the teaching staff that um, they are assigned and that all is happening currently um, for our students because most of our students will attend a half day kindergarten program and then go on to a program like CASE or, or um, CASE and although um, quite good programming it does um, have us questioning is there a better way to meet their needs. Um, we put a lot of effort in currently to be sure we are meeting our students needs but we see that there's a better way, a more robust way to be able to do that. Well we know we know uh, the kindergarten ch uh, children really enjoy the, the bus rides uh, to the different <laughs> programs, full half day K and case and all that so we know they love that uh, but that aside the idea of a stable program in your district's home school for a full day experience is something that that uh, I can hear is, is really something uh, compelling. Uh, Jessica, just a little bit, what, what in, in anyone really, what, what would be in programming? So if we, ha we have a half day program now, um, what might we do in a full day programming? What else would you see as a principal that would be really neat and exciting and, and enriching for, for our students? You know, I think definitely we would be able to fully explore the kindergarten uh, frameworks the way that they're meant to be um, explored and, and, and presented to students and allow them more opportunity. Um, I think we also would possibly have an opportunity to present more of the specials classes that we've not been able to music do in the past. And wellness and Currently yeah. um, we have music every other week um, and media and PE but this might allow for another special to enter into play like art um, or foreign language. Um, so it really would be trying to tap into all the various um, subject areas where students might excel and might uh, enjoy some of that exposure. Um, I also think that, you know, we've talked about this a lot, is that time for play mm -hmm. and for children to really engage in meaningful social interactions with one another. Um, being in the classroom all day together allows for them to do that um, in a little bit of a, a different way um, with the same teacher watching and, and taking a look to see who are the children that might need a little bit more support throughout the day with some of that social interaction and having just one teacher do that over the course of a day um, can provide that teacher with a lot of really inf helpful information um, to help support them to be more successful. So I would see it as application through play and games um, of the content uh, of the kindergarten content and then introduction of possibly some some additional specials classes. I, I love that idea of uh, maybe introducing foreign language at the kindergarten level. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's at first grade, but that might be a pretty cool, uh, cool thing. A really important piece to early childhood is being sure that you have a nice balance of teacher-directed and child-led activities. And the challenge that we have currently is that because half day kindergarten is only two and a half hours and because we do have standards that we're trying to prepare our children for, our students for, as they get um, older and are in um, the upper elementary grades, there's a push down effect so that we're very focused right now on making sure there's time for all of the academics in kindergarten, which is fine, but it squeezes out those opportunities for what we know is best practice um, for our students that are five years old, five and six years old at the kindergarten level that do need to have experiential learning opportunities. That is play, that is hands-on, um, and is very much around preparing them and getting them immersed in the academics as well. Well, that social interaction and play is, is really a key component of what, what we, we do, but we can do more of. Uh, Absolutely. So, Connie, the, the, the report concludes that the school committee uh, recommends to the school committee that there be compulsory, um, not voluntary, full day K in, in Needham. So what's the distinction and, and why, why, um, you know, why, would, why might the school committee accept a recommendation like that for compulsory uh, kindergarten? 
One of the major differences is that it's tuition free, so it's available to all of our students and equitably available to all of our students. Many uh, parents currently enroll in case, as we've said, but that's a tuition-based program and not available to everybody, um, perhaps for financial reasons. But this means we offer the same full-day experience to all students regardless of uh, various other aspects of their day. Some parents actually prefer that their students not have a full day, although that number is decreasing and decreasing, mm -hmm. yeah. almost none anymore. Almost all want a full day experience. So the compulsory would mean that all of our students in Needham at that age would go to kindergarten for a full day and have no tuition involved in it. Uh, Non-compulsory means that you can charge tuition and you can have different options for how many students attend, but we really feel this to be equitable, we should be doing this across the school district. In truth, it's very much like the existing case mm -hmm. program, so we wouldn't be doing anything different. Really different, right. Because we're, we're putting the, the curriculum into the half-day program and then they're getting enrichments through case. So unless we, we bring in all the students into the full day program, we're not going to make any change. Right, right. Um, so a, a, uh, the school committee is now considering a, a recommendation from the, the uh, committee for a full day compulsory program um, that, is, that is paid for uh, by, by the town. I wanna, I wanna get into that just for a couple of minutes and maybe Diane and, and, and Mary, you can talk about this. So, and, and Connie, certainly, uh, that, there are a couple uh, implications for, for doing full day kindergarten. There's implication on the budget for cost, for example, for additional teachers. Uh, there are implications on s providing space. I mean, my understanding for many, many years, Needham had, had not had this conversation because of space issues. Right. And mm -hmm. there continue to be space challenges in our schools. Our enrollment looks like it might be leveling off at the elementary level, but overall in the last 10 years, 11 years, it, it's increased uh, pretty significantly. Perhaps now it might level off a bit, but it's still there's still space challenges in, in all of our elementary schools. Um, fortunately, with the construction of a, of a new hillside, that's gonna provide some, some relief. Uh, but there's there's planning, there's curriculum planning that must take place uh, with with our teachers. Uh, there, there's a timeline that we'd have to attend to. Um, let's talk a little bit about that cost um, space. What what did, what did the committee discuss in, in those regards, Diane? We did a practice session practically. <laughs> we went around and spoke with each of the principals mm -hmm. and tasked them with how would they solve the problem. And so we took the latest demographic data from McKibben and we provided that to them and they looked at the situation and they looked at it not just from a kindergarten perspective but how within their buildings within the five grades within their buildings how would they accommodate um, these children knowing that these children arrive grade one anyway so this was to think of it as coming a year earlier and and as they're accustomed to doing they found very creative solutions to accommodating the students um, and, and it was um, uh, novel solutions at times and, and some tried and true knowing that um, these increments of too many children within the classrooms uh, um, come in waves and so um, it can be accommodated early on and you might have to accommodate it later um, in third grade or fourth grade and different kinds of solutions so we're what we saw was a real possibility of making this happen when looked at across the district, we are three classrooms short of being able to accommodate full day kindergarten across the district. But it's not just three classrooms, it's looking at it school by school. And the, the good news is that principals are accustomed to doing this every budget year. They start with a piece of paper that says how many kids in, in the following grades and come to the school committee with a plan of how they'll make that happen. And they were able to make it happen knowing the numbers of kindergarten children coming in. Starting in, um, we put, picked a random year, fiscal year 18, and, and said look at it at 18, look at it at 19, look at it at 20, and see how you can make it possible. So there could be a principals, and Jessica, you can speak to this, principals do this every year. They are very creative about space in their buildings mm -hmm. and how they can accommodate different and unique needs that come up every year. Um, and in Needham, principals have to be especially creative because space is at a premium. Um, you know, a, a neighboring town, Wellesley, is they're, they're talking about uh, an excess school that they may have, an excess classrooms that they may even bring offline. Wow. Needham doesn't have that luxury. Uh, instead, we've tried to be very thoughtful and creative and, and pretty stingy with uh, where, we, where we're able to put 
uh, students. Um, but I, I, I guess I want to know a little bit more about that. There, there would be, for space, there could be some short-term trade-offs with, uh, with mm -hmm. programming. I mean, what, what, what might that look like, or what was some of the general conversation about that? We, we looked at, you know, it was, it was different really across all of the schools, and, it, and what we really understand is that it's not a static, it was an exercise, it's not static, and so we certainly will, would, would need to and would want to re-engage several more times before we sure. would get to um, the kickoff date, um, if, you, if you will. Um, one solution we looked at was um, in a scenario at a school if the if we could do this by making the class size a little bit higher than than what our guidelines are could we provide the staffing through teaching assistance additional teaching assistance in mm -hmm. order to get the right ratios per regulations and obviously to provide a quality um, educational experience for students um, in other schools we looked at, like Hillside's a, a great example because we, talk, we do talk about Hillside a lot, they're so stretched on space. So when we're thinking about Hillside, if we're thinking about it prior to the, the, to the build of this, the new school, and that is what we've been talking about, we'd really need to be looking at some potential off-site of Hillside, we think. Off-site um, kindergarten, yes, perhaps in another yes. school or another location. Like okay. Diane was saying, you know, when we look at it as a as a, um, at a as a broad stretch, we're three short when we were doing the exercise for FY18. So you take that, and you, and that's where the creative creativity comes, which can lead to very very uh, uh, many different avenues. None of which we've landed on and made in decisions um, right. Right. needed decisions about things like being creative around combining classrooms for specials, things like that. Those are exercises that the principals, and Jess can talk to this more specifically if needed. Um, that's what we're accustomed to, just really being able to pull together and making something work within the within what we are, we've been given as far as the space of our buildings. I loved Jessica's solution on the tech center. That was creative. Oh. What was the solution uh, on the tech center? <clears throat> um, you know, just thinking about we're moving into mobile devices. We have a lot of mobile devices in the elementary school that we're piloting. And so thinking about how often is a standalone tech center used? Could that be a space? For example, a short-term space, um, but that's a space that might be um, you know, available uh, for this full-day kindergarten. We've talked about, you know, every year I go through this um, all the principals go through this with looking at cohorts and, and, you know, a bubble group that goes up to that next level and where are they going to go and which rooms can you redeploy and who might you put together, um, you know, looking at the different specialists in the building and how they might work together in their spaces a little differently to provide a classroom. And all the principals are very used to doing this. So, um, you know, I think that when you think about that, that number three, um, you know, it, it's 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 not a big number, and it's something that we do all the time. Um, and if we really value this for our students, that you know, in the long run, it's really worthwhile. Um, so there are also, uh, aside from space challenges, and there are, and, and I, I certainly don't want to minimize those, that if we believe this is important, that in the short term we're going to have to make some trade-offs in programming, or as you suggest, in some kindergarten class size with support uh, to, to make some things happen. And, and those, are, those are some of the things that we'll have to go in eyes wide open to, to tackle, mm -hmm. and there certainly will be challenges, uh, but, but good challenges to try to tackle. Cost. Cost is another factor. Um, this doesn't come free. <laughs> what, what, what are some of the just big picture general costs that, that the committee discussed? Again, we relied on how we know the process for running the school and doing the budgeting. So we did some scenarios where we looked at um, uh, uh, size of the classroom, how many students per classroom, the teachers that were necessary, the TAs that are necessary, the specialists, the, uh, the furniture, um, the supplies, the technology. We did the full-blown budget picture um, to potentially accommodate. And so class size is really a driver here. Um, the school committee has given guidelines for minimum numbers of students, mid-level and maximum numbers of students, and so we, we looked at those different scenarios and, and a, a 
uh, there's a, a, a few budget numbers flying around that go from 1.6 million to 2.7 million, and that seems a, such a big stretch. But that really is all driven by class size. How, if we're if we're going to be at maximum class size, it just so happens that then you need a lot of TAs, and that's expensive. And so we found that the mid-level number of class um, students was the the better scenario from a financial perspective. And Again, as we discuss for the space problem, we have more homework to do, but we are able to do it. We know how to, to do a full-fledged budget and, and give the school committee a number that's real. So we, you know, we're talking about uh, you know, a range again and more work, but 1.6 to $2.7 million is a, is a broad range. But there is a cost to hiring teachers and staff to, to make this happen. The community knows that, and it's something that the school committee will obviously have to discuss Tackle. and take into consideration and work with uh, other town boards to say, well, how, how does this work? What's the timing? How, how, do, we, how do we make that happen? Well, it, it, is, uh, it, it is exciting. And I think uh, maybe just on that, that last note, uh, Connie, what, 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 about a, what about a timeline? What about next steps for, for full day kindergarten? What, what do you envision um, moving ahead? We first, uh, we do want to have a public hearing. So we'll and that's scheduled for May 17th. That's scheduled for May 17th, which would be at 7 o'clock at our school committee meeting. And we invite all of the public to come. We're hearing from people, mostly letters saying, when is full day kindergarten mm -hmm. coming? I want this for my child. I'm moving into town. But this is a chance for the entire community, parents and non-parents, to talk about how they feel about it and, and, and ask their questions. Uh, we won't be having direct dialogue, but we'll be hearing from everyone about it. And then we'll need to take a vote. The school committee will take a vote in June. Probably sometime in June, yep. Yep, that's what we hope for anyway. Yep. Because we'd really, in spite of the apparent obstacles or challenges, we want to move this forward. And everyone, has been willing to work with those challenges. So we want to hear from the community on May 17th, and then we'll probably take a vote in June, and then we will need to work hard with our uh, budget to see how we can make this work and how this is going to, how the additional dollars will come in. Well, and it's certainly something that's not imminent. This is not something for next year, uh, for, for next September. Uh, but it, it sounds like the school committee wants to hear from parents and members of the community and then uh, take a vote to decide what is a possible pathway and what are next steps to, to set this in motion. Uh, and, and all that you know, will depend on lots of conversation with the community and, and working with town boards um, to, uh, and the principals to, to see what's an appropriate time and what can happen. But I think what's important is that uh, the school committee looks to be setting a pathway. Right. Um, and and that, that's a critical message to the community that it's not another discussion point, but that it is a step in a direction that will lead to full day kindergarten for all children in the town of Needham, which is very exciting. So well, I would just like to say we really want to communicate this to everyone, so everyone would really be wise to look this report up on anyone hearing this on the school website. It's a wonderfully done report, really lays out, and we'd really like to have everybody prepared for that so we can then take this forward. I, uh, I'm hearing that uh, what's exciting is that the school committee is considering compulsory full day uh, kindergarten for, for all the children and, and need them to provide an equitable education. Uh, Jessica and, and Diane and Mary are pointing out there's a lot of work ahead. This isn't the report isn't done and we start. Uh, a lot of work with teachers and principals and staff and families to, to make this a reality. And, and uh, the next step in that is May 17th. A public hearing. Folks should come to the school committee and then the school committee can weigh all of that input um, and the work it's already done and, and make a, a decision about how to proceed in June. Well I think that's exciting and I appreciate all the work and effort and energy that everybody's put into it and thanks for having the conversation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.